Did it ever happen to you that you realized very suddenly, very clearly that you need to have one book very fresh in your mind before your, you discuss your master thesis and so you rush to your university's library, you pick up the book and you read it in a hurry? Because to me, no, no, never happened. Enjoy my review of Lost in the Funhouse. Enjoy! Spoiler alert, at the end of the review I'm going to recommend the book, I liked it. Maybe not like, oh my god, you have to read it, but like, if you're into this kind of stuff, you should probably check out Lost in the Funhouse, it's a classic. The narrator of the first story, Night Sea Journey, like, seems like it might be a fish. It's very compelling to read the story as if it were a fish, but is not. It's obviously a Shagwa warrior. I know what you're all about to ask. Book chemist, what are you going to review next? At the moment I'm reading Lovecraft Unbound, which is a collection of stories inspired by the works of Lovecraft. I was lured into reading it by the fact that there are uh, Joyce Carol Oates and Michael Shaman in this collection, but so far it's a very hit or miss collection. It's also a very miss collection. Also really, all the Barth experts out there, where should I go from here? Should I read Giles Godboy or The Sodweed Factor? Because I, I, I believe The Sodweed Factor is probably more seminal and important as a novel and I've been suggested it more times, but at the same time I'm a, I'm a bit more drawn toward Giles Godboy. The story and what little I know about the novels make it, makes it more compelling to me. What should I do? Also, keep in mind that I probably won't read any of the two until 2019, so, I mean, don't be in a hurry to answer me. If you didn't like the introduction to this video, Lost in the Funhouse maybe is not the book for you, but if, like me, when you get a book which begins with an author's note, and then you turn the page and you get seven additional author's notes, and that makes you, I mean, delights you unimaginably, then Lost in the Funhouse is very much a book for you and you're probably a messed up reader. Lost in the Funhouse is a postmodern classic. It is a monument to postmodernism, it is 100% postmodern, it is a classic of the genre, and it is every bit as postmodern as If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino and as In Watermelon Sugar by Richard Brotigan, which is not so widely read nowadays but should be because it's one hell of a trip. But differently from these other books, Lost in the Fun House is not quite as enjoyable. It is one of those books that were clearly written to make a point more than to entertain the reader, and you'll end up being entertained by it only if you're interested in the point. What I mean is basically, if you are not that much into postmodernism, these are probably better introduction to it. I filmed a video about good introduction to postmodernism, check it out. I don't think Lost in the Funhaus is one of them. The point with Lost in the Funhaus it, it is that it is so good at doing what it does, getting you lost in a fucking funhouse. It begins with a few understandable stories, one or two are even kinda straight, kinda, well, literary short stories, as good as they get, as straight as they get. It gets interesting, it gets addictive, it, it's, well, it's great, it's rewarding, up to the main story, Lost in the Funhouse, which is by far the best in the collection, halfway through that story, it starts getting, well, um, it starts making you feel a bit uneasy. The point is that, yes, it's the experience of getting lost in a fucking funhouse. At first it's cool, at first you enjoy it, you, you're like, oh well, oh, how fun, I will have a story to tell my friends. But then you start realizing that you really can't find your way out, that it's not as fun as it is, that probably everyone else in the whole like fucking amusement park is having a better time than you, and you just really would like to get out of the funhouse, but can't, because you're lost, you're trapped in the funhouse. And after that story, after Lost in the Funhouse, which is a masterpiece, it's one of the best short stories I've ever read, it gets weirder. <laughs> it gets to the part where you're just fucking annoyed and a bit scared because you can't find the exit. And the second half of the collection is made of these very cryptic, very incomprehensible short stories, which also employ a lot of intertextual references to ancient Greek myths and Greek literature and that you probably won't understand if you, have, if you don't have a basic knowledge of those kinds of things. I don't. But let me stress that point once again because it's very basic to understand the book. That is the experience of being lost in the Faunos is amazingly reproduced. Like some of the stories in here convey this feeling of being lost 
while at the same time portraying an interesting story beautifully. Everybody can use metafiction, everybody can comment on himself writing or herself writing the story, everybody can write these quirky stories about, you know, oh, I'm a writer who don't know what story to tell, oh, I'm actually telling a story uh, as I'm doing this, how postmodern I am, but it takes a John Barth to do that and make the piece interesting and make the piece compelling to read. And if the book gets a bit annoying, a bit difficult in the second half, it's just because that's how it's supposed to be. It's not because Barf wasn't good enough to make it enjoyable, it's because that's the whole point of the book. How getting lost in it, how having reached that state in literature in which postmodern, postmodernism is very much a necessity, isn't that fun after all? But that's the good of the ride, the bad of it, it's as part of it as the good of it. And that's the reason why a story like Westward, The Course of Empire takes its way, which is actually the last story in David Foster Wallace's Girl with Curious Air, which is a comment, uh, it, it was sold as a separate book in Italy because Italians do like money, um, it's actu it actually makes little sense to me because it's a reaction to that, to the whole idea of the funhouse, to the whole idea of this fiction, that it's cryptic and it's not that rewarding and it's difficult for the sake of being so, but the reaction to it, it's much more, like, lots, much less enjoyable and much less fun than the actual fucking thing, which is actually quite awesome. There's really not much help to say, I mean, of course, there is enough to say to write several PhD dissertations which have been written, but what I, as a reviewer, can tell you is if you're interested in this idea, do get lost in the book yourself and find out about it yourself. This is very much a book, what I can tell you is that it is a book for people who are addicted to fun houses, for people who are addicted to reading and to novels and to the experience of like experiencing narrative worlds so much that they don't that they like the idea of getting lost in a fun house. They like the bad of it as much as they are compelled by the good of it. It's enjoyable as a read, it's also cryptic for the sake of being so, you know what you're getting into when you get into Bart's fun house. What I can tell you if you are a casual reader who is kind of interested in this collection, and this is something that goes against every cell of my English major being, but really, if you are interested in this thing and you're not studying it like at a university level or you're not studying it for your own research and you're not like hardcore, because in that case you have to read the whole thing, if you're just reading it out of curiosity, what I can tell you is that you can do uh, without Eco, Glossolalia and Menelayad, which are really, really cryptic and really filled with references, so don't bother with them if you like would like to just get on with the enjoyable part of the book. And that also, uh, like, uh, t um, tale, I think it's called, title, title and life story are not especially enjoyable, but those ones you should read because they make some very nice postmodern points. That said, next time they ask you to whom is the funhouse fun, you'll be able to answer to the book chemist. The funhouse is fun to the book chemist. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, guys, what do you think about Lost in the Funhouse? Let me know in the comments. Bye, guys. And I know what you're going to ask me. Book chemist, what the fuck is a Shagua warrior? 